Good afternoon, church. This is Pastor Steve coming to you from the safety of my very own bedroom, this makeshift studio. I've got my St. Patrick's uh, Day shirt on and uh, want to wish you a happy St. Patrick's Day. I hope that uh, you're able to have a little levity in all of this heaviness that's going on. I uh, wanted to give you a couple of updates and share with you a, a little bit about Worship by Wire and tell you a little bit about our staff and, and talk a little bit about giving in these times and encourage you to do a few things while you are in your homes these days. <clears throat> First update about how the church has responded to the coronavirus. Uh, we mentioned uh, in our announcement, the first announcement last week, that we would get back to you by sometime today, and so that's what I'm doing. Last Friday, Karen and I brought you a message that the church building would be closed through March 27th, including Sundays for public worship uh, on the 15th last Sunday, as well as the 22nd, uh, though we are doing uh, worship by wire, and I'll come back to that in just a little bit. Um, so nothing has changed. The church building will continue to be closed through the 27th. Um, it may be extended beyond that. We don't know yet, but we'll be following closely to see what the recommendations are, and we'll continue to bring you updates. I just want to say a, uh, a word about the worship by wire. Um, we had, uh, as of last night, 282 people have viewed the video for Worship by Wire on Sunday, and many people have uh, sent us emails and texts about how they engage and experience Worship by Wire in their homes with their families. I uh, heard from Rob and Tori from Connecticut, uh, heard from uh, Kathy and Larry in Florida. So it's kind of neat to see how we're connecting and in some ways feeling a sense of togetherness, even though we're all separated in, into our own homes at this time. Thank you for all that feedback. Um, I've asked Dane, who works on our website at Crowd, to post those. And so those are available. I'm going to make a link available in the email that I'm sending you. But go to the website and look for that. You'll be encouraged to see uh, some pictures and examples of how people are experiencing uh, worship. In the closures, I did want to mention as well, as we mentioned before, that the Faith Friends Learning Center, they are closed uh, through April 3rd. Again, that may be extended, but as of right now, the Faith Friends Learning Center is closed through April 3rd. A word about our staff. Our staff are just absolutely amazing. They have been working really hard, even though uh, we're trying to stay out of the building as, as much as possible. And uh, on the rare occasions when we do go in to film a video or to do with something that in our office, we're containing that to the administrative wing. Um, so that uh, Mike Wildity and our head custodian can go through the entire building and do deep cleaning and sterilization, making sure that it stays clean with nobody coming and going. So if you have a key to the building, please try to honor that as well. We want to try to keep everyone out of the building. Uh, the only places that are being used, and even these are being used very sparingly by staff only, is the chapel for some recordings and the uh, office space. Uh, but our staff are working doubly hard from home, trying to learn how to do this worship and ministry by wire. Um, in addition to Mike Waddington, who's working at the church and doing all the cleaning, uh, we did ask that Butch would stay home. Butch is in that uh, demographic now where the health professionals are recommending that they stay home. So we've encouraged Butch to stay home. He'll still be paid, and he is uh, appreciative of that. Um, to help Mike out with the deep cleaning and sterilization, we are... Um, bringing David Wadlington on. That's Mike's 27-year-old son. And uh, for this period of time, David will be helping with that effort. A um, little bit more about our staff. Kathy Schmucker has been working really hard to bring you Worship by Wire for Wednesday. That'll be available tomorrow night. A little bit more about that in a minute, but she's been coordinating all those as well as engaging with email and phone calls and continuing to find resources for us. All of us are uh, doing all that we can. She's praying for you and connecting and reaching out to you. Um, Amy, our youth uh, director, uh, did a video for our youth for Sunday night, uh, to have Sunday night by wire, if you will, Sunday night youth group. She's working on one for confirmation to keep that going, as well as some faith stories. Uh, all the while, she's got her own kids at home that she's um, trying to be a mother to. So you can pray for uh, Amy, pray for all of us. Again, this, um, this challenging time is, is actually uh, quite challenging for staff, and we're doing all that we can. Uh, to make sure that we stay together as a church, even though we're being separated uh, by necessity. Uh, Cheryl uh, has been part of some video conferencing. She's continuing to monitor the finances of the church and is uh, continuing to make sure bills get paid. She has come in a couple times because uh, she needs to attend to some things that are in her office. 
if uh, Dennis, um, he's our worship arts coordinator, he's continuing to plan worship, working with Kara and me to provide the worship by wire, coordination, music, uh, things of that nature. So uh, again, all the staff are just uh, really, really working hard. Kara, in fact, is in a video conference all day today with the bishop and the other district superintendents for cabinet meeting, and uh, she's over at her office right now engaged in that. Along those lines, our staff would welcome you to call them if you need anything, email, text. I'm going to provide their phone numbers or cell numbers uh, in the email I send to all of you. You can also call the church. They'll be uh, checking those voice messages regularly. Um, but please, don't hesitate to reach out. We are uh, working hard, and we're here for you, and we want to do all that we can. <laughs> Along the lines of our staff, I want to say a word about giving. Um, there's a lot of folks that are in the habit of giving when they come to church for worship and with us not having worship at the church facility. Uh, and we don't know how long this is going to go on. It's possible that we could uh, really have a, a drop in our giving, and that, that could be very crippling. Um, even though there may be some savings with the um, church use being lower, but that would be relatively small. We still have to keep the heat on for the pipes, and staff are still being paid. So I uh, just want to encourage you to think about um, continuing to keep up with your giving, your pledges. You can do that electronically. You can set up, this may be a good time to set up, automatic withdrawals uh, where that just happens automatically. If you need help with that, uh, please call the church, leave a message for Cheryl, she'll get back to you, or you can email her, Cheryl Seiler. Um, you can also just send a check in the mail. So uh, either of those ways are great. If you need help with any of that, just call the church. Um, this is also a good time at home for you to get logged into Realm, our church database with its own app. And uh, if you've not done that yet, uh, let us know if you need us to send you another invite. Um, great time to get familiar with that and to get connected and to call folks and see uh, how to use the Realm app. I received a phone call this morning um, from our city mayor, Steve Wilder, who's also a member of the church. And he wanted to let me know that he's reaching out personally to all of the different faith communities in this area and asking those leaders if they would please uh, make sure that the folks that are in their flock that are over 65, the most vulnerable demographic, that there's folks that are calling them and just checking in, asking if they need anything. Some of them, uh, you know, they're being asked to stay home by health professionals, not even to go to the grocery store if they can avoid it. So we can help one another out. If you're willing and feel comfortable doing so, uh, call me or text me or email me. Let me know. I'd love to get a list together of people that are willing to go and run errands for some of our folks that are supposed to be staying home. But all of us can just make a phone call or two if you're willing to do that. Uh, let me know. I can send you some names. You can also just take it upon yourself. Think about some folks that you know that are in that vulnerable demographic. Give them a call. Let them know you're thinking about them. See how they're doing and find out if they have any needs. Even if you are not comfortable going out to provide for them, let me know and maybe we can get them connected with others in the church that would be happy to make some, run some errands and get some groceries and things like that. Um, with our Worship by Wire, the next opportunity is going to be tomorrow night. Um, many of you come out for the dinner on Wednesday night at 6 o'clock, and then some of you stay for the various activities for adults, for youth, and for uh, children. Um, John Hartzell, who is our head chef for Wednesday night, he has a special message on a video, very short. I want to encourage you to watch that and hear what he has to say. Uh, others of you, maybe you've never been out on Wednesday night, but here's an opportunity for you to see what all the uh, fuss is about, all the excitement. Um, grab a sandwich at 6 o'clock, tune in. It'll be available. The video will be available tomorrow night at 6 o'clock, and you'll get a taste uh, of what uh, Wednesday nights are like. It'll be uh, shorter than the uh, video from Sunday. It'll also be a little bit more interactive. Kathy's uh, invited people to share some things, and uh, I think you'll be really, really blessed. So tune in uh, tomorrow night at 6. We'll send an email out with that. You could also go to the website. We'll make that live again at 6 o'clock tomorrow night. Let me check my notes here. Um, Kara will be preaching this Sunday. She's continuing in our Lent series, the last week of Jesus' life, and she'll be focusing on Wednesday. What do you know about Wednesday of Holy Week? I don't know much, uh, but Kara will be unpacking for us uh, the different scriptures that speak to that, the different traditions that speak to that. It'll help us continue on our journey of faith in this season of Lent, and especially in this season with the coronavirus that has been 
uh, such a challenge for many of us, we can maintain our experience of worship. I want to encourage you, uh, now that you kind of have a sense of this worship by wire thing, one of the benefits is so you can invite others to worship with you in a very easy, non-threatening way. You can share the link. You can email it to a hundred of your friends and family or others. Some of them, maybe they don't, maybe their church isn't offering worship by wire. And so uh, they don't have any other alternatives. So encourage you to think about people, maybe even call them up and have them uh, join you in your home by telephone and uh, you can experience while they're watching, you're watching at the same time. So I hope that you'll tune in this Sunday as well. Just know that you are loved. Know that we are praying for you. Know that we are still the church and we're connected together. And we look forward to that day, hopefully sooner than later, when we can open our doors again and gather together and worship in body and mind and our very presence with one another. Until then, know that we are here.